Hey guys, it is the Indie Mayhem Show. I'm Mike Sorg at Sorgatron on the Twitter, ready to talk indie wrestling with you with our guest today. But first, please go check out everything at IndieWrestling.us. WrestlingMayhemShow.com uh, is the main site for the podcast and everything. Uh, subscribe on Stitcher Speaker, iTunes, iHeartRadio, and of course the video versions on the Wrestling Mayhem Show YouTube and the uh, YouTube and the uh, Facebook page. Yes, where we're streaming live right now. And also keep an eye on the Facebook page. There's a lot of events for interviews coming up and everything of that sort uh, as we get them whenever we get them, uh, uh, schedule-wise and everything like that. I just realized I still have a name tag on from the event I just came from. Excuse me while I de-identify a little bit. Uh, but with us today, uh, somebody that we had on um, from way back in the day on the Wrestling Mayhem show, I think we interviewed him in Philadelphia at a ring of after a Ring of Honor event, if I'm not mistaken, if that if that's correct. Beautiful Bobby Shields joins us on the show today. How you doing, man? Oh, uh, uh, yeah, you got your back. <laughs> when I was trying to think of when um, it was that we you had me on last, was it like 2010 or something? Something like that. It's back when I remember it was when uh, Ring of Honor were doing their TV tapings for HD Net. If that puts any okay, context. so it was HD Net days, and I believe that ended. The beginning of 2011. Wow. Wow. We were out there uh, filming a little bit for Montreal Theater, which seemed to take three years to do. So, yeah. Yeah. I remember Joe Dombrowski was there, and um, yeah. Bobby Beverly, so we had the Bobbies. Oh, yeah. Yeah, (laughs) yeah, yeah. Yeah, because he ended up working a match. Yep. TV, yeah. Probably 2010. The good old days, right? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but anyways, uh, let's get started with our a little get-to-know-you question first off. Of course, you're into this stuff. you got to be a fan to begin with. What's your earliest memory of pro wrestling? So I kind of have a couple of early memories of pro wrestling. And my earliest memories were of really of like Hulk Hogan, actually. Um, so I was always uh, I was a fan of the Hulkster before I was actually a, ha- uh, a fan of uh, pro wrestling. Cause I can remember my dad watching it a little bit. Um, <clears throat> I guess it would have been the eighties uh, and not really liking it. Um, it was kind of boring to me. Uh, and then I remember probably around second grade. So let's say 90, 91. <clears throat> I'm flipping through the channels and I, I want to say it had to, it was something with the Undertaker, uh, and uh, I ended up sitting there watching it. And uh, I remember then looking for it like every day, basically, because you're young, you don't know how TV schedules work. And after a certain amount of time, asking my dad when it was on, and uh, I don't think I ever missed a Tuesday Night Titans or a Monday Night Raw after that, basically. That's <clears throat> awesome. That's great. So how did you move from the, the watcher to deciding, okay, maybe this is something that I can do? Uh, so growing up, I did judo for, let's say, 10, 12 years, something like that. And I realized um, that a lot of it kind of crossed over in a way. I mean, one is, is a, a truly you versus the other person sport, but... Um, I had been learning how to fall since I was like six years old. Um, A lot of the moves, while while, uh, might not be similar in the sense in judo, you don't want to go with the guy, but uh, they're the same moves that uh, you'd see in wrestling almost. Awesome. So it kind of of rolled right into it, right? Yeah, and then just... um, Sean Waltman, uh, uh, as actually like the one, two, three kid was somebody who I saw as being like the smaller guy and kind of inspiring me. And, um, just, I, I think strangely, uh, I think backyard wrestling was actually a lot bigger in the nine late nineties. And, uh, uh, like probably almost every pro wrestler there is out there ended up kind of doing that with buddies and, uh, Lo and behold, found a school in Rochester, New York, and here I am, almost fifteen years later. <laughs> so you've been over uh, a, a bit. I mean, you were—I think you were located in Philadelphia for a bit there, uh, and and you worked all around. Um, I think the most that I started seeing you was uh, up in Prime Wrestling, 
Uh, and, uh, you know, I kind of threatened to bring this up on the live show the other day. But, uh, uh, you know, as, as part of... Uh, you, you, you had long, flowing locks. I think every wrestler has that phase, don't they? They have the long hair phase and the short hair phase, right? I think so. Uh, I think it's a pretty standard wrestler look is long hair. Uh, I see in the background there some clips being pulled up. Um, yeah, it, it was a phase. It was, you know, though, I think the uh, long bleach blonde hair there for a while was really unique. I don't think a lot of people really did that. So it helped me stand out, I think. For better or worse, it was part of my identity. It was who I was. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that was something that was, uh, of course, Prime Wrestling was something that was a uh, uh, local TV up there in Cleveland. Uh, definitely a little bit different than most most groups that mm -hmm. you probably are participating in, right? I'd say so. I mean, uh, it was great. Um, it wasn't. It was real TV without being real TV experience because real TV um, is obviously a lot uh, more higher pressure, probably. But it got you used to working a camera versus a crowd, things like that, um, mm -hmm. and really trying to uh, mentally. Stick to your times more more often than than not, and of course, uh, uh, leading classically to the hair versus hair match, uh, <laughs> which I think didn't they get they got a local barber that was a sponsor to come in and cut your hair for you. They did, I believe it was. Uh, um, I don't know if I'm supposed to say it, but I think it was Johnny Gargano's mom's friend. <laughs> there she is! Wow, look at the leopard print. <laughs> Yeah, it was amazing. <laughs> well, at least you got it professionally done. Usually it's a hack job, right? I mean, you know, you had something a little better to, to, to deal with. <laughs> the that original here. idea was go full bald, but but they um, they couldn't get the uh, extension cable, basically. They didn't have an extension cable, and, and the thing wasn't battery-powered. So I think that worked out in my favor. They also said it would have taken way longer. Yeah, yeah. I, I love it that she already she's, kind of took too long. You're struggling, and you're making these great faces, <laughs> and she's just like, like mildly, like using, using. She's still combing your hair gently as she's doing this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she had a straight up like uh, sharp ass razor. Like if I moved my head too much, I was getting scalpel. <laughs> That's great. Uh, some good times with that stuff, um, and of course. <laughs> Uh, I, I got to bring up so because uh, I you know I, I follow you on Facebook uh, uh, personally and I, I know you're very involved in, in 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 a few different things including bodybuilding um, and I didn't know that you were like into like you know holy crap this is real bodybuilding uh, uh, from the pictures I've been seeing can you talk about a little bit of getting involved with that alongside pro wrestling? Well, so um, pro wrestling is great, but it, in a way it doesn't. Um uh, it hasn't been uh, the biggest driving force in a while. Uh, it, it's hard to sometimes stick to a diet or, or uh, really motivate yourself to push yourself in the gym. So the real thing that I've kind of been more involved with is powerlifting. Mm -hmm. And um, I've been doing that since, let's see, my first competition was 2013. Yeah. And um, uh USAPL Raw Nationals was October of was is usually in is in October and so last year's 2015s was uh, I competed at but a week before I kind of rolled my ankle and I've been having actually a knee problem pretty severely ever since and so uh, I made it through Raw Nationals but I really couldn't continue training that method um, so. I decided to finally pull the trigger on something that, that I'd thought about for a while. And that was bodybuilding. And, and I actually kind of really enjoyed it. it. It was a good grind, but it really, it really, really, really takes over your entire life. Um, it's a 24 seven thing versus everything else I've done, wrestling, body, uh, wrestling, powerlifting, judo, everything. You have a bad session, you have a bad day, you know, maybe you just go and have a pizza or something like that. I don't know, whatever it might be. <laughs> But with bodybuilding, it's twenty four seven. You cannot go and do that type of stuff. So it was a, uh, it was a uh, six month prep from Ju January 9th to July 9th, basically. Um, and uh, yeah, it was it was awesome. But um, something I I may do again in twenty eighteen. I don't know. I'm trying to uh, uh, do the powerlifting again. I'm scheduled for a meet on twelve seventeen, 
and uh, hopefully it goes well, and I'll I'll compete in that for a little while again, and then really I'll I'll be able to see which one I I like a little bit more. Awesome, and of course uh, you've been popping up on, on my radar here. Uh, a big part of this, uh, uh, the latest things going on in, in uh, Renegade Wrestling Alliance. With um, uh, other 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 friends of ours that have been in other promotions like Marshall Gambino and, and Super Hentai, uh, but the highlight for me has been uh, you, you tagging with Super Hentai alone, awesome. But also both of you coming out sporting the Zubats. Yeah, man, Z- Zubats, man, it's the ZWO. We're taking over. <laughs> um, yeah, once again, it's got you got to stand out. Everybody's wearing black and red or simple stuff or. Whatever, this stands out. How many people are wearing that? <laughs> Not entirely the Zubask uh, 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 crowd, too. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> That's great. All right, well, so what are you watching today? What are you watching at wrestling? What's got your attention? What are you kind of looking out for now? Or in bodybuilding? Um, I guess. <laughs> no deep uh, I, I shouldn't say I'm really even watching much wrestling. I, should, I feel mm-hmm. like that guy saying, oh, I don't really watch oh, wrestling. You're, you're anymore. that classic indie guy that doesn't watch wrestling yeah, anymore. Man, it's, um, you're so jaded. Yeah, I don't even know if it's that. I, it's maybe like I do feel like I've seen so much. And, and I it, this is almost like a, a product of their uh, a downfall of their own success. It sounds ridiculous to say, but there are too many good matches now, <laughs> and uh, <laughs> and it, it 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 makes it so it's not that special when you see like this amazing matchup, like um, you know maybe the first time you saw like an AJ Styles versus Chris Jericho or something like wow, but the third or fourth or fifth time, like no matter how good it is, it's 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 kind of you know you're seeing it again and again. Um, so I haven't really been paying super attention to anything. Um, there's just an overabundance of it on TV mm-hmm. um, with uh, you know Raw being three hours, SmackDown two hours. You got NXT on the network. You got um, all the backlog stuff on the network. You have TNA. You have Ring of Honor. Uh, and that's, that's what I'm able to watch. I know that there's – so much more out there. I, I gave up on trying to watch like your PWGs and stuff like that. Um, cause I just don't have the time to dedicate to it, uh, or to watch so much. Uh, Monday night raw is still on my TV every Monday night, but the attention to it is, is not there completely. Um, yeah, so I'm not really watching too much, but Shows that I do give my attention to, though, are like Arrow, Flash, Legends of Tomorrow, and now like Supergirl. Like, yep. They're awesome. <laughs> it might be overtaking wrestling. Well, is there anything catching your attention on the shows that you're on that you're seeing out there on the road? Yeah, so shows that I'm on, and, and I'm, I'm kind of disappointed I, I'm not on those shows a little bit anymore. But uh, in ECWA, there there was um, uh, there's there's some tag teams. Um, that were uh, trained by Mike Keener. Um, they are are uh, doing awesome stuff, and for some reason, I am completely blanking on names, and <laughs> I, I blame too many concussions on that. <laughs> I th- wait, 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 wait! No, no, Chris Taylor was already giving that 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 answer just last episode. We can't have that. We can't. We can't have that two episodes in a row. <laughs> oh, it's definitely it would probably happened too, too much. It's it. Oh, Eric Martin and and uh, yeah, uh, um, they're the uh, what the hell are their names? Go back. So, um, anyways, they uh, the classics. Yes, that's what they are. I wanted to call them like the throwbacks, but I knew they weren't throwbacks. That was the the uh, team in Shakar. Um, the classics. They're they're awesome dudes like who are just a few years in who are um gonna make some some big waves uh logan east laroe uh in virginia he's in shakar as well um uh he's pretty awesome stuff like these are guys that that are gonna be something soon i think um um trying to think of others that uh that i see lately that really catch my eye those I would say those are the the main couple of people that that I've seen really develop and 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 uh, who I've talked to or whatever. You know, maybe it's more of a personal connection that, mm-hmm. and I'm a little bit 
uh, biased and jaded on them, but yeah. Look out for them. I already found some stuff real quick on YouTube, ECWA, looking up the classics, and look up those other names, too, if you guys want to check them out. Definitely out there. Um, all right, so uh, from there, I uh, want to close with uh, uh, our usual question. You can take this any way you want, as extreme or as uh, gentle as you want to, but what's the best and the worst thing from indie wrestling? You've been at it for a while. The best thing is definitely the high you get from uh, from from a match going good, from from everything clicking, from the reaction. Like, man, there is nothing better. You feel like Superman right then, right? You have so much confidence from from it. It's it's by far the best thing. And, and I think uh, also right now um, going is is the. Uh, a good majority of the promotions, at least that I, I seem to be working for now, like they, they go out and they hustle. They're not just expecting people to show up. Mm. Um, so, so it, it really usually inspires you when, um, to work harder when you can tell that the promoters are working hard, that they're doing their, their job promoting. So those are the things that are awesome right now or in general. Like when promoters promote and, and they work, it makes you want to work. And, and then, Good crowds tend to lead to uh, good matches, which good morale and just is a great time. Then <laughs> um, I'd say that the worst thing, though, is uh, the ease that so many people call themselves pro wrestlers um, or uh, get into the business. Um, they. Uh, yeah, they'll. There's too many trainers, basically. Like, I wish there were. I'm in the minority, I know, because I support uh, state commissions um, because it, it cuts down on the number of promotions generally. Mm-hmm. And man, if there was some way for like a state commission to be able to limit like the schools or something, that'd be amazing too, because you definitely cut down on the amount of of people coming out. So there might be, you know, let's say there's a hundred jobs in the WWE. There might be a hundred, a, you know, is there ten thousand, a hundred thousand people out there that are indie wrestlers, like technically vying for those jobs? I don't know. That's a good. That's a good number. I, I, and there's a lot of. I mean, you know, how many of those are not even close to anything that WWE or one of these other promotions would pick up? Too like there's like right like and a, like um, I, there are guys in this area that are that were trained by somebody, and this this somebody didn't even have a ring. They literally would go to like the community center and pull out like just gym mats and, and get trained on those. So they never really learned how to, to like run the ropes or like even really bump properly. Uh, you know, and then they, they wondered why they weren't getting book places. Well, maybe it's because you, uh, uh, you know, weren't really trained. You, you, you claim you love this business so much, but yet you weren't willing to sacrifice by driving somewhere, um, worthwhile to get trained or spending the money mm-hmm. like how much do you really love this and how much how much desire do you really have if, if you're not willing to put any sacrifice for it and, and there is there is a little bit of of you know kind of vetting the person that's training you too and unfortunately i i think like some people and i've heard we've heard the story from many of our guests on the show like i started going to this wrestling show and found out they had a school and i went and, and i was like oh that's how you get into wrestling and that's it so maybe these people are the same way. They don't know, you know. Completely. And, yeah. and like, I I really, this is going to sound so, so <laughs> double-edged. Uh, I think my training was terrible, but I think my trainers were not. Um, and I think it's due to stuff like that, where it was um, the school for a promotion and kind of that probably kept the promotion open longer than maybe it should have. Uh, but it was a rotating door of, of trainers and a lot of the time it was just kind of get in the ring and, and beat you up and, and not really teach you like psychology of a match or anything like that, or, or really have like a lesson plan to make sure that guys progress. Certainly, certainly. A lot can be said for that. Um, I know we've had, we've had people saying like, well, if your guy doesn't, doesn't, has never been in the WWE, that's where you want to go then like why are you training with anybody else and it's one way to look at it too yeah, yeah people have asked me or or have said like that that um and and you know i'm not patting myself on the back but 
because uh, but they they feel as though like I have a good mind for the business or I could train somebody very well and I'm willing to give help and pointers but I never made large substan- substantial amounts of money so I don't feel like I could train you to be able to do the same thing to be able to do that if you want to make it to like maybe a little bit less than my level because every carbon cl- copy is going to be a little bit less like sure I can help you become an indie schlub how many how many guys are on the WWE roster that had a crappy trainer? You know, that that, you know, rose above that the trainer that they had, you know. I think it's an interesting question to look at too. So Honestly, probably uh quite a few mm-hmm. now that they're kind of taking indie guys. I mean, a lot of guys do develop past that, but I think you're already putting yourself at a uh at a negative, uh, you know, you're putting yourself behind. Awesome. Well, uh, food for thought out there for, for a trainer. So if, if, if people want to get at you, find out what's going on with Bobby Shields, where you're going to be um, online or ask you about training uh, or to train them, uh, where can they find you online? Uh, the best places would be, um, I guess, Twitter, at Real Bob Shields, at, on Instagram, at underscore Flex Appeal. And uh, BobbyShields.com um, is... Never the most up to date place, but a place that you can find links to everywhere else. And yeah, apologize because I think I put the wrong Twitter in your uh, uh, screen. So <laughs> ignore that. Go to, go to Real Bob Shields. I don't know who this other guy is, but uh, yeah. What well, they link to? Yeah, I'm curious. Uh, yeah, I, yeah. Well, 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 let's type in Real Bobby Shields and see who that is. Uh, but uh, <laughs> whoops. Sorry about that, whoever you are. Uh, but no, go check him out. Um, uh, good guy to follow if he's coming to your area. Definitely check out the show or check out stuff over on IndieWrestling.us, IWCRWA. I don't think you've done VOW, right? Prime Wrestling's on there. Actually, you're probably in. A, you're, yeah, you're definitely in some of that. The, I did a VOW or two. Yeah, yeah, he's in there. Uh, so just type in Bobby Shields over there. You'll pop up a bunch of his matches, including the Resolution Anthology. You can actually get all the resolutions, including that hair versus hair match that he was involved in, which is also yes. available online widely at Prime Wrestling. And the uh, and Sex Appeal versus the Handicap Heroes, yes, I believe, with, in a street fight. Yeah, yeah, with uh, Zach Gowan uh, and uh, Greg Iron. Myself versus Ben Fruth. Uh, what else? What else was there? Oh, the formation of Sex Appeal against. Fontaine's freaks led to the ring by Oscar from Men on a Mission. <laughs> we had, we did a uh, we did a uh, superstars or, or legends DVD for Prime Wrestling, and then just like I'm looking at the list and I'm like Oscar from Men on a Mission, but do you? Oh wrestle? yeah, no. So and it, it's literally just him coming out and rapping, right? So, but it's all yeah, got, yeah. Right? Um, like uh, I, once again, I don't know, like you know how much I should say, but but. I believe he pretty much offered to do that for nothing because he was trying to like finagle his way into some financial scams to like say he was uh, he was um, uh, representing the company so he could go around and ask businesses for money. Oh no! <laughs> okay. Oh wow! That's, yeah, that's on there too. Uh, so there you go. You can find that on YouTube too. Just look up uh, Oscar and Prime Wrestling. It's not the best quality uh, uh, cut from this, but uh, oh man, there he is. It's so good. How was the rap? I can't remember. Uh, it wasn't bad. Yeah, good. it wasn't too bad. Good. Um, good. I actually really, really liked that six man tag, and that is where Bobby Beverly lost like half his teeth. Oh no! <laughs> Jeez. And it was its own stupid fault. There you go. Go check. <laughs> wait, wait. What happened? I, I, uh, there's got to be a story. He did a, he did a big stinger splash in the corner and literally hit the ring post. <laughs> like not, like not, not fake out. Like it. No. Like, like shot himself so far, and it was, and and just face right into the ring post. I guess. You know, I never thought when Dolph Ziggler does that, like almost every attempt. That he makes and I'm like nobody can do that. Nobody could really do that. Nope. You, you, you tell me, Bobby Beverly just proves me wrong on that. I think so, or he definitely hit it off of something metal because he did crack like a good couple of teeth and and uh, yeah. Hey, there's a Samoan in this match too. Uh, yeah, Naj the Wild Samoan from I believe he claimed he was the wi- Naj the Wild Samoan from Hawaii, which was confusing because Samoans aren't usually from Hawaii. Uh, it's all the same ocean. There he is in the <laughs> ring now if you're on the video. So thank you so much, Bobby Shields. Always great chatting with you. Can't wait to awesome. see you at the next RWA show, Renegade Wrestling Alliance. 
at least here in the Pittsburgh area, if you want to check them out, uh, at Real Bob Shields on the Twitter. <laughs> yep. Yep. See you uh, at RWA on December the 10th. Yep. And this weekend, Primal Conflict Wrestling in Harpers Ferry, West Virginia, uh, 10, 19, or 11, 19, and Nova Pro Wrestling, 11, 25, All Friday right. night. Check them out. And, of course, check out everything at WrestlingMayhemShow.com. All the interviews, all the past interviews we've done with so many uh, people on the indies, wrestlers, and the people around it, including Indie Wrestle Life on the Twitter, uh, and which was a really surprising one, what he's into. Uh, videographers, announcers, and promoters, you name it. Check out Indie Mayhem Show on IndieWrestling.us and WrestlingMayhemShow.com. And, of course, like I said, check out uh, uh, Bobby Shields himself and everybody else over on IndieWrestling.us and around the indies. Call him by our boy Riz to get you updates on what happened, the, what you need to know from the weekend before in independent pro wrestling. And, and he has a lot of fun with it, too. Thank you so much, everybody, for joining us. We'll see you guys next time and support Indie Wrestling. Oh, Show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com.